Single-handedly running a YouTube channel can be hard. If you're consistently putting out content, finding the time to draft ideas, record the takes, and edit large amounts of footage, it can often feel like more trouble than it's worth. However, if there's one thing that making videos about Islam does to lighten the load, it's giving me an endless stream of foot-in-mouth content that makes all the time and energy that goes into producing a video worth it. Case in point, an imam by the name of Yunus Kathrada on a Friday sermon had some very interesting things to say regarding the Jewish people. Shocker, I know. In light of conflict in recent weeks, you'd expect him to claim alleged human rights violations or the expulsion of Palestinian families as grounds for hatred of the Jews, but he doesn't. In fact, his reasoning is true to Islam at its core. Let's begin by reminding ourselves of this enemy about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and I will give you the meaning of the ayah, and the Yahud say, Yahud translated as Zionists, translated as Zionist Jews, whatever you like, the animosity of the believers towards the Yahud is based on religious grounds. Because the people of Iman, the people of faith, hate the Yahud because of their disbelief in Allah. Disbelief in Allah? But, but wait a minute, I, I thought the Quran teaches to you be your religion and to me be my religion. Well, the Quran does teach this. Before these verses were later abrogated when Muhammad traveled from Mecca to Medina and Islam became the brutal military force that took over Arabia and its surrounding far regions. While Muhammad was in Mecca, he was weak and had nowhere near the military force required to wage jihad against society. This is why he simply preached religious tolerance and repentance, like, to you be your religion and to me be my religion. It was once he amassed a large enough force that he made his way to Medina and his tactics drastically changed. For example, shortly before Muhammad fled Mecca, a new group of Muslim converts pledged their loyalty to him on a hill outside of Mecca called Aqaba. In page 208 of the Sirah, it says, When God gave permission to his apostle to fight, the second oath of allegiance at the Aqaba contained conditions involving war, which were not in the first act of fealty. Now they, Muhammad's followers, bound themselves to war against all and sundry for God and his apostle, while he promised them for faithful service, thus the reward of paradise. Now, this event was significant. It demonstrates that complete 180 that Muhammad had now turned as, quote, God gave him permission. God gave permission to his apostle to fight. And what was this willingness to fight others based on? And because of their rejection and denial of the prophets and because of their injustice towards the people, al-farqu bayna al-adawatayn. هو أن عداوة اليهود للمؤمنين عداوة لا عدل فيها وأما عداوة المؤمنين لليهود فهي عداوة عادلة ومتعقلة إذ يفرقون بين اليهود المحاربين والذميين والمعاهدين Here's one of the first of those foot and mouth moments. The Imam cites disbelief in Allah as grounds for hating the Jews. But wouldn't this also be true of Christians? What about Hindus or Buddhists? What about anyone and everyone who does not hold to the tenets of Islam? Is this Imam saying that true Muslims should have nothing but hatred in their hearts for all non-Muslims on earth? If Muslims consider Muhammad a prophet, and yet Jews, Christians, and a majority of all non-Muslims see him as false, wouldn't this also put him within Islamic crosshairs? Muhammad certainly thought so. Let's continue. If you do not hate the opponents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have no faith. Go find yourself a church, go find yourself a, a, a synagogue, but the place for you is not a masjid. If you do not hate those who curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who insult him. Another foot and mouth moment. This imam seems to be acknowledging that Jews and Christians don't hate the unbelieving world for their unbelief. Keep in mind that in Christianity, loving your enemy does not mean giving them approval. It simply means that in spite of what you disapprove about them, like their actions or behavior, that you're willing to ultimately love them for the sake of God, as they're made in his image, Christian or not. I can love my enemy and still defend myself if he tries to kill me. I can love my enemy and still hold him responsible for his actions. This Imam seems to have missed this entirely, but what else is new? Having said that, once again, we do not, we have not ever called towards violence, towards others. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wal muslimin wa a'zill al-kafarata wal mushrikeen wa dammir a'da al-deen. 
Allahumma ansuril mujahideen fi sabilika fi kulli makan. We have not ever called towards violence towards others. Allahumma ansuril mujahideen fi sabilika fi kulli makan. All right, now if this insane irony here isn't obvious, then I don't know what is. But hey, speaking of Allah granting victory for those who wage jihad everywhere, let's take a look at a couple examples. يعني الوضع الحالي هو المعركة الفاصلة بيننا وبين اليهود وعلى الحكام العرب الذين يعني وضعوا رؤوسهم تحت نعال اليهود واعترفوا بأن لهم حق في هذه المنطقة بدون داعي إطلاقا أن يراجعوا أنفسهم لأن الدورة قادمة على إبادة اليهود وتطير الأرض بنفسهم بالكامل Ah, yes, but we don't call for violence against anyone. We, well, we just simply pray that Allah would help those who commit violence. Man, what does that taste? It tastes like a big, stinky foot. <laughs>